So the topic is the protector deity Pehar Gyalpo. Pehar Gyalpo is, uh, is considered a worldly deity, um, sometimes considered Tibetan. And now the, the word Pehar has different, different um, interpretations depending on different scholars. Some scholars believe that it's a kind of a corruption of the Sanskrit Vihar or Vihara, meaning temple. And then Gyalpo means king. And the, the word Gyalpo here can also mean that he's a kind of king spirit under the designation of different um, kind of demons and ghosts. Then you can have one classification, which is uh, Gyalpo. So Behar has many different origin myths, depending on, on uh, the different texts you read. One of the earliest uh, uh, origin stories is that there's a country uh, to the north, northwest of Tibet called Batahor. Hor is also a word that's been used for Mongolia in the past. But the Batahor, and this uh, country was uh, conquered by Songsen Gampo in the 8th century, and he pillaged and uh, plundered a lot of temples and palaces. And from one of the temples, he brought back all of their ornaments and uh, dishes and bowls and anything of value. And, and in hiding in one of these uh, uh, vases was this uh, protector deity of the temple, uh, Pehar. So this is one story of how Pehar came to Tibet. And then he was subjugated by Padmasambhava again in the 8th century. Um, now, with Songsen Gampo, it could have been earlier. It could have been the 7th century or, or, or late 6th. It's hard to say with Tibetan chronology. So we have this Pehar Gyalpo. Now Pehar Gyalpo is actually referred to as Pehar Gyalpo Kunga, which means the five forms of Pehar. And so with these five forms, we have body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities. So the main one we see in art is actually the, the activity Pehar. And this form he ha in this form, he has three faces, six arms, a very wrathful, white in color, wearing a bamboo kind of uh, hat, similar to a monk's riding hat. And uh, he rides a white lion. I'm not sure with the early text if they describe it as a white lion or a snow lion. Snow lion is often a, is generally a late introduction into Tibetan art. So, so the main form that we find in art is this uh, activity pehar. Uh, the other ones ride a blue lion, a mule, an elephant, a zombie, or a horse. So, so there can be different mounts depending on the text that's used to create uh, murals, painting, or sculpture. So that's the origin and appearance of, of, of Pehar. Now, the majority of art that you find, painting and sculpture, the majority of painting is really northern China and Mongolian. And the sculpture, the majority of the sculpture that we find is generally um, Qianlong. It's really um, 18th century northern China. So, but in Tibet, the main location for uh, Pehar worship is the uh, Nechung uh, Temple, just below uh, Drepung Monastery on the west side of the city of Lhasa. So the Nechung Monastery is the main location for Pehar Gyalpo, and then of course uh, the Nechung Chogyong is is a minister within the entourage of the of the Pehar Gyalpo Kunga sort of uh, group of protector deities. Um, also surrounding the Nechung in the in the outer courtyard of Nechung Monastery, we have the painted we have the uh, seventy five lords of pure lineage which have been erroneously called 75 forms of Mahakala by early, mid-20th uh, century European scholars. And so, no, these are not forms of Mahakala. The 75 lords are the 10 guardians of the directions, eight great gods, eight great nagas, eight great planets, four worldly guardians, um, or 
or the four uh, kings of the directions, 28 constellations, and the nine great Bhairava. All of these together make up the 75 lords, which can be in the retinue of uh, Pehar, and they can be in the retinue of the one face six arm Mahakala, or many, many other protector deities. These are a very general uh, group of 75 figures that can be um, uh, associated with almost any kind of, of protector deity. Uh, based on, on the literature and the tradition. So this is just a, a little introduction to the key sort of um, points of Pehar.